In today's video, we're going to compare the gaming performance of games running natively on Apple M1 under the ARM64 architecture against the same games running under x86-64 or Rosetta 2. Our first game to look at is Beyond a Steel Sky. Beyond a Steel Sky was only recently updated on Apple M1. Before this, the game was running under x86-64, but had no optimizations done for Rosetta 2. So, at 1080p, medium settings, it would get 30 FPS, which was actually very similar performance to the game running on a recent iPhone or iPad. Revolution Software quickly updated the game for the M1 GPU using a universal binary with two architectures, x86-64 for Rosetta 2 and ARM64 for the native build. If you have any issues with the ARM64 version, which you won't anyway, you can right click on the game and choose to run the game using Rosetta 2. Devs can add this option to use add-ons that haven't been updated to support Apple Silicon. Even if you have an M1 with 8GB of memory or 16, the performance is the same. At 1080p medium settings, they both get 60fps on average. Overall, it's a massive improvement from the non-optimized version at 1080p medium settings. The GPU performance is improved on both Rosetta and ARM64 with about plus 25 to 30 FPS for all configs. You can also now play at high settings and will get around 30 FPS, with the ARM version receiving about plus 2 to 5 FPS compared to x86-64. Spaceship Demo is a playable first-person experience that Unity and the Apple Metal engineering team worked on together to showcase AAA gaming on M1. The demo's effects were made using Unity's visual effect graph. From simple environmental VFX to more complex augmented reality and holographic UI, HUD, to a gorgeous reactor core effect. I downloaded the demo from GitHub and then imported it into a blank 3D Unity 2020 project. Inside the project, you can see how the game is built, and Unity have provided a walkthrough, which may be helpful for developers interested in Apple M1. For this video, I built two versions of Spaceship Demo and exported them to the Applications folder an Apple Silicon build and an Intel 64-bit build, which will play under Rosetta. Unity are targeting 1080p, 33.3 milliseconds or 30 FPS on M1-based Macs. The ARM64 version does a better job at maintaining this performance, while the Intel version has a few more hiccups. The Rosetta version sees some big lag spikes on my MacBook Pro, I could get around this if I closed and reopened the Intel application about three times to get the performance to match the ARM version. At the end of the day, the performance of both builds is very similar, no matter the resolution or graphical settings you choose. The performance of both builds is on par with the performance of the game running on a baseline PS4 or a mid-range gaming PC with an NVIDIA GTX 1050 or AMD RX 560 so that is cool. If you want to try out the game on your M1 Mac or even an Intel Mac, I've included my builds in the video description for you to download. Recently, Baldur's Gate 3 was updated to a native application on M1. It is the first native M1 game to be available on Steam. Well, kind of. If you didn't know, Steam is an x86-64 application and doesn't support ARM64 applications yet. The Mac developers, Alvarez, managed to get around this by shipping an ARM64 version as a separate executable. So, when you open the game and the pre-game menu appears, you can choose either the Intel Rosetta version, which is optimized for Rosetta using x86-64H, or you can choose the native ARM64 version. Choosing the ARM version opens a separate window and bypasses Steam. When exploring around the maps, the ARM version offers only slightly better performance compared to Rosetta, 
but it is almost exactly the same performance during cutscenes. The only downside is that patch 5 has higher requirements than patch 4. You see, the game now takes up over 8GB of memory, around 10GB, which means the game is not currently working great during some scenes on M1 Max with only 8GB of memory, which is another factor with the mixed performance on these specific M1 based Macs. Regardless, I've been told this will be fixed in future patches. Out of all the Apple platforms that this arcade racer is available on, M1 offers the best performance by far. Recently, Gameloft updated Asphalt 9 for M1 GPU using a universal binary with two architectures, just like Beyond a Steel Sky. The ARM64 version has significantly better performance, so there is no reason to open the game in Rosetta, unless something is not supported, but I could not find this to be the case. The ARM64 version gets almost plus 10 to 20 FPS, and the frame time is a more of a flat line compared to playing the game under Rosetta. I know the game was originally built for mobile devices, but it still looks great, especially here. Disco Elysium was one of the first native M1 games back in November 2020. However, the native version is only available from the App Store. The Steam version is still running under Rosetta 2. Some people were disappointed that they can't play the native version on Steam, but it actually doesn't matter as they both have very similar performance. Both 8GB and 16GB M1 configs can quite happily play at 4K resolution and max settings. Under these settings, you'll get around 30 to 50 FPS. If you want a higher FPS on Apple M1, lowering the resolution to 1080p, you'll get around 55 to 58 FPS on both the ARM and Rosetta versions. What do you think of the results from this video? Did you think that native M1 games would have considerably better performance than what you've seen here? Regardless, I'm hoping this video was educational and gave you a small insight into what goes on into building games for Apple M1. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, drop a like and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. My name is Stewie and thanks for watching.